Cambridge Secondary One Checkpoint, English as a Second Language Listening. October 2017. There are six parts to the test. You will hear each part twice. For each part of the test, there will be time for you to look through the questions and time for you to check your answers. Write your answers on the question paper. The recording will now be stopped. Please ask any questions now because you must not speak during the test. Now open your question paper and look at part one. There are five questions in this part. For each question, there are three pictures and a short recording. Choose the correct picture and circle the letter A, B or C below it. Before we start, here is an example. Why did Jason visit Ali? I'm glad you're feeling better, Ali. Did your friend Jason give you another book to read? Not this time, Dad. They made cakes in class today, and Jason brought one for me. Lucky you. Anyway, back to school tomorrow. I'll go on the bus with Jason. Oh, I'll need a letter from you explaining why I was off school. The answer is B. Look at the three pictures for question one now. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. You will hear each recording twice. 1. Which team does the girl play for now? Are you still on the school volleyball team? Not anymore. I wanted to try something with more running, like football or basketball, so I left. Oh, isn't the girls' football team full this year? It was, so I played basketball instead for a month. But then someone left and they let me join. I prefer it to the basketball team. Now listen again. Are you still on the school volleyball team? Not anymore. I wanted to try something with more running, like football or basketball, so I left. Oh, isn't the girls' football team full this year? It was, so I played basketball instead for a month. But then someone left and they let me join. I prefer it to the basketball team. Two. Where will the boy's family have a party? So are your parents still having a party in the park for your granddad's 80th birthday? Grandad certainly wants a party, but indoors, so it'll be at our home now. Won't the apartment be a bit small? It'd be better in a hotel. Hmm, but Grandad didn't want them to spend a lot of money on it. Now listen again. So are your parents still having a party in the park for your granddad's 80th birthday? Grandad certainly wants a party, but indoors, so it'll be at our home now. Won't the apartment be a bit small? It'd be better in a hotel. Hmm, but Grandad didn't want them to spend a lot of money on it. Three. What time does the concert start? Let's get to the concert hall at three, shall we? Then we can meet Dad before we go in. I'll text him. Good idea. What time does the show begin? Is it half past? That's right. I can't wait. OK. That means we need to get the train at half past two so we have enough time for the journey. Now listen again. Let's get to the concert hall at three, shall we? Then we can meet Dad before we go in. I'll text him. Good idea. 
What time does the show begin? Is it half past? That's right. I can't wait. OK. That means we need to get the train at half past two so we have enough time for the journey. Four. What was the weather like for the boys' journey? Did it snow when you went to Scotland? It didn't, but the car journey there was awful. You could hardly see the road, the weather was so bad. Oh, why? Well, there was a big storm, with lots of rain and wind. It was really cold in the car, and it took so long to get there. Now listen again. Did it snow when you went to Scotland? It didn't, but the car journey there was awful. You could hardly see the road, the weather was so bad. Oh, why? Well, there was a big storm, with lots of rain and wind. It was really cold in the car, and it took so long to get there. Five. When is the swimming competition? I feel like I'm nearly ready for the swimming competition next week. I have to practice with my team for a few hours on Friday. Great. Isn't the race next Wednesday? Actually, that's when I'll probably start to feel worried. I usually feel like that on the evening before the big day. Right. Thursday then. I'll come and watch. Now listen again. I feel like I'm nearly ready for the swimming competition next week. I have to practice with my team for a few hours on Friday. Great. Isn't the race next Wednesday? Actually, that's when I'll probably start to feel worried. I usually feel like that on the evening before the big day. Right. Thursday then. I'll come and watch. That is the end of part one. Now turn to part two, questions six to ten. For each question, there are three pictures and a short recording. Choose the correct picture and circle the letter A, B or C below it. Listen carefully. You will hear each recording twice. Six. When can the girls start surfing lessons? Could I speak to Victoria Peterson, please? Speaking. Great. I'm calling to confirm you're still interested in a surfing course at the beginning of August? Yeah. The first lesson is on the second, right? Yes, if you're taking the beginner's course. Actually, I've tried surfing before, but I'm certainly not an expert. Then there is an intermediate group starting on the third, and an advanced group starts on the fourth. Which skill level would you prefer? The intermediate group sounds fine to me. Now listen again. Could I speak to Victoria Peterson, please? Speaking. Great. I'm calling to confirm you're still interested in a surfing course at the beginning of August? Yeah. The first lesson is on the second, right? Yes, if you're taking the beginner's course. Actually, I've tried surfing before, but I'm certainly not an expert. Then there is an intermediate group starting on the third, and an advanced group starts on the fourth. Which skill level would you prefer? The intermediate group sounds fine to me. Seven. What did the girl dislike the taste of? Hi, Sally. How was your lunch with your aunt? OK. We went to a restaurant. We had loads to eat. Soup with bread and a burger. Sounds good. Mm, the soup was funny, actually. It had a kind of sour flavour. I left half of it. I don't know what it was. I just had a few spoonfuls, then some bread to get rid of the taste, hoping my burger would come soon. 
That was amazing, though. Really juicy and tasty. There was bread with that, too, of course. Now listen again. Hi, Sally. How was your lunch with your aunt? OK. We went to a restaurant. We had loads to eat. Soup with bread and a burger. Sounds good. Mm, the soup was funny, actually. It had a kind of sour flavour. I left half of it. I don't know what it was. I just had a few spoonfuls, then some bread to get rid of the taste, hoping my burger would come soon. That was amazing, though. Really juicy and tasty. There was bread with that, too, of course. Eight. What does the teacher suggest students should bring? OK, everybody. Listen carefully about the trip on Friday afternoon. The coach leaves at two from just outside the school entrance. We'll all meet there and please make sure you're suitably dressed. Please note that the forecast is for warm weather, so jackets or things like that won't be needed. You'd probably find trainers a bit uncomfortable in the heat. It'd be a good idea to have a cap or something to protect your eyes from the sun, but we'll be indoors most of the time. Now listen again. OK, everybody. Listen carefully about the trip on Friday afternoon. The coach leaves at two from just outside the school entrance. We'll all meet there and please make sure you're suitably dressed. Please note that the forecast is for warm weather, so jackets or things like that won't be needed. You'd probably find trainers a bit uncomfortable in the heat. It'd be a good idea to have a cap or something to protect your eyes from the sun, but we'll be indoors most of the time. Nine. Which insect is the boys' school project about? Have you decided which insect to choose for the biology project? I'm doing bees. Are you? I do bees too, but the lesson we had on them was so confusing. The ones on butterflies and ants were a lot clearer. They're both incredible insects. I totally agree, and butterflies are so beautiful. Ants are really well organised, aren't they? I mean, they all work together. That could be quite interesting. Well, that's the main reason I chose them in the end. Now listen again. Have you decided which insect to choose for the biology project? I'm doing bees. Are you? I do bees too, but the lesson we had on them was so confusing. The ones on butterflies and ants were a lot clearer. They're both incredible insects. I totally agree. And butterflies are so beautiful. Ants are really well organised, aren't they? I mean, they all work together. That could be quite interesting. Well, that's the main reason I chose them in the end. Ten. What do people most like making at the Science Museum? We have some fun and exciting do-it-yourself projects for you to choose from at the Science Museum. You have a choice of projects to help you learn about electricity while making cool stuff, like a radio that uses energy from the sun. There's also the walking robot. That's always one of the top choices with visitors. And there's the fan that works on battery power. Though that's quite difficult to put together, it's the one most visitors want to make. Now listen again. We have some fun and exciting do-it-yourself projects for you to choose from at the Science Museum. You have a choice of projects to help you learn about electricity while making cool stuff, like a radio that uses energy from the sun. There's also the walking robot. That's always one of the top choices with visitors. And there's the fan that works on battery power. 
Though that's quite difficult to put together, it's the one most visitors want to make. That is the end of part two. Now turn to part three, questions 11 to 15. You will hear people talking in five different situations. For each question, circle the correct answer, A, B or C. Listen carefully. You will hear each recording twice. 11. You hear a teacher talking to some school children about a project they are working on. Why is he talking to them? A. To make a comment on their good work. B. To suggest ways of organising their groups. C. To explain how they can find information they need. OK, listen, everyone. I'm glad to see you've taken my advice on sorting out who does what. It's great that everyone's been involved in this project and knows exactly what they have to do. I want to say how well you've worked together, and this is really showing in the quality of your project so far. Finally, although it's fun looking online for photos to illustrate your work, if you want to add more pictures, you can draw them at home yourself. Well, good luck with the rest of it. Now listen again. OK, listen, everyone. I'm glad to see you've taken my advice on sorting out who does what. It's great that everyone's been involved in this project and knows exactly what they have to do. I want to say how well you've worked together, and this is really showing in the quality of your project so far. Finally, although it's fun looking online for photos to illustrate your work, if you want to add more pictures, you can draw them at home yourself. Well, good luck with the rest of it. Twelve. You hear two friends talking about an environmental project. What did the boy enjoy about the project? A. Learning the names of trees. B. Drawing some good pictures. C. Helping to recycle things. It's good to be involved in this environmental project, isn't it? Yes, but there's so much to learn. Like all the names of trees. I keep forgetting them. <sighs> Me too. But I like the drawings you did, especially the ones of trees. It's hard to get what I've seen onto paper, though, trying to get it right. What I really like is going to the bottle bank. I like hearing the bottles break. And it's good to know that all the tins and glass will be used again. Now listen again. It's good to be involved in this environmental project, isn't it? Yes, but there's so much to learn. Like all the names of trees. I keep forgetting them. <sighs> Me too. But I like the drawings you did, especially the ones of trees. It's hard to get what I've seen onto paper, though, trying to get it right. What I really like is going to the bottle bank. I like hearing the bottles break. And it's good to know that all the tins and glass will be used again. Thirteen. You overhear a boy leaving a voicemail message. What does the boy want to do? A. Put something off. B. Send something back. C. Take something up. Hi, Gran. It's me, Tim. I'm phoning to say thanks for the trainers you sent. The colour's great. 
It's a shame you couldn't bring them yourself at the weekend. Mum said you had to look after Grandad, so I hope he's feeling better. Anyway, the trainers are a bit too small. They're size 41. Do you think you could order the next size for me and Mum and I will return these ones straight away? I'm sure size 42 will be fine. Thanks a lot. See you both soon. Now listen again. Hi, Gran. It's me, Tim. I'm phoning to say thanks for the trainers you sent. The colour's great. It's a shame you couldn't bring them yourself at the weekend. Mum said you had to look after Grandad, so I hope he's feeling better. Anyway, the trainers are a bit too small. They're size 41. Do you think you could order the next size for me and Mum and I will return these ones straight away? I'm sure size 42 will be fine. Thanks a lot. See you both soon. Fourteen. You hear a father and daughter talking. Why does the girl want to join the cycling event? A. She wants drivers to pay more attention to cyclists. B. She feels convinced cyclists are safer in large groups. C. She likes taking part in cycling competitions. What's the point of cycling with hundreds of cyclists through the city if it's not in a competition? It's organized, but not a race. It's an event that happens in hundreds of cities around the world. I decided I really want to take part because I believe in what it's about. And what's that? For cyclists to come together and ride as a group through our city streets. Drivers will have to notice us. For once, they can't just drive anywhere they want because we'll be in their way. All vehicles should be able to share the roads, don't you think? Now listen again. What's the point of cycling with hundreds of cyclists through the city if it's not in a competition? It's organized, but not a race. It's an event that happens in hundreds of cities around the world. I decided I really want to take part because I believe in what it's about. And what's that? For cyclists to come together and ride as a group through our city streets. Drivers will have to notice us. For once, they can't just drive anywhere they want because we'll be in their way. All vehicles should be able to share the roads, don't you think? Fifteen. You will hear an announcement about a teen art event. Why is the woman making the announcement? A. To persuade teenagers to take part in some art classes. B. To encourage teenagers to talk about art. C. To invite teenagers to come and meet some famous artists. I'm here to invite you to teen night this Friday. The City Gallery is putting on an exciting range of art-making activities for teens by teens. You'll learn how to use a wide range of materials in unexpected ways to produce your own works of art. You'll also get to hear talks given by our staff about paintings and sculptures by some of the world's best-known artists. Tell your friends to come to the gallery for an evening to remember. Now listen again. I'm here to invite you to teen night this Friday. The City Gallery is putting on an exciting range of art-making activities for teens by teens. You'll learn how to use a wide range of materials in unexpected ways to produce your own works of art. You'll also get to hear talks given by our staff about paintings and sculptures by some of the world's best-known artists. Tell your friends to come to the gallery for an evening to remember. That is the end of part three.
Now turn to part 4. Questions 16 to 20. You will hear a man called Patrick Blaine who works in a science museum as an expert on fish. For each question, circle the correct answer. A, B or C. You now have 45 seconds to look at the questions for part 4. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. You will hear the recording twice. Hello, I'm Patrick Blaine. I study fish and I look after the fish collections at the Science Museum. I didn't start out with that plan. I just ended up here. I was working on a fish farm in Scotland, which a friend had said I'd enjoy. But I heard about a job at the Science Museum. They required a degree in biology and a certificate in ocean studies, both of which I had, so I decided to go for it. They put me in the section dealing with fish because I was so enthusiastic about them. The fact that every day's different is what I enjoy most. When you open your emails in the morning, you never know what's going to be in there. There could be pictures of strange fish questions about them, or requests for x-rays of fish, or messages from people wanting to visit the museum. We have over half a million fish in bottles and jars. Of course, they're not alive. They're kept in salt water to preserve them and keep them safe from damage. I still get excited by what I find in the museum cupboards. I found a very old fish a few days ago that didn't look interesting at first, but could be quite important. I've been going through books and papers doing research on it. I'm hoping to be able to put it on display soon, so everyone can see it. I'd love to visit the museum in the Far East, where it originally came from. I've seen many strange fish, but my favourite is a deep sea fish which has two lights on its head. One is blue and one is red. And it's a pretty scary looking fish with its huge mouth. Because of the blue light, it can see fish that are a long way away, even in very dark waters. A book I'd recommend to anyone interested in fish is The Fish Fossil Hunters all about scientists who explore the history of fish through looking at fossils. Fossils are plants or animals that over millions of years have become hard and turned into rock. The book tells us how scientists got things wrong in the past, but how in the end that helped them to discover new things. It also shows how much scientists compete with each other to be the first to discover something. It's a book that's really worth reading. Now listen again. Hello, I'm Patrick Blaine. I study fish and I look after the fish collections at the Science Museum. I didn't start out with that plan. I just ended up here. I was working on a fish farm in Scotland, which a friend had said I'd enjoy. But I heard about a job at the Science Museum. They required a degree in biology and a certificate in ocean studies both of which I had, so I decided to go for it. They put me in the section dealing with fish because I was so enthusiastic about them. The fact that every day's different is what I enjoy most. When you open your emails in the morning, you never know what's going to be in there. There could be pictures of strange fish, questions about them, or requests for x-rays of fish, or messages from people wanting to visit the museum. 
We have over half a million fish in bottles and jars. Of course, they're not alive. They're kept in salt water to preserve them and keep them safe from damage. I still get excited by what I find in the museum cupboards. I found a very old fish a few days ago that didn't look interesting at first, but could be quite important. I've been going through books and papers doing research on it. I'm hoping to be able to put it on display soon so everyone can see it. I'd love to visit the museum in the Far East where it originally came from. I've seen many strange fish, but my favourite is a deep sea fish which has two lights on its head. One is blue and one is red, and it's a pretty scary looking fish with its huge mouth. Because of the blue light, it can see fish that are a long way away, even in very dark waters. A book I'd recommend to anyone interested in fish is The Fish Fossil Hunters, all about scientists who explore the history of fish through looking at fossils. Fossils are plants or animals that over millions of years have become hard and turned into rock. The book tells us how scientists got things wrong in the past, but how in the end that helped them to discover new things. It also shows how much scientists compete with each other to be the first to discover something. It's a book that's really worth reading. That is the end of part four. Now turn to part five. Questions 21 to 25. A group of teenagers are going on a week's sailing course. You will hear a woman giving them some information about the course. For each question, fill in the missing information in the numbered space. You now have 20 seconds to look at the questions for part five. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. You will hear the recording twice. Hello everyone. I've got some information for you about your sailing course. You're staying at the sailing centre for a week, so you need to know what to bring. Everybody should bring a sleeping bag and warm clothes, of course. The centre has top quality boats and will provide all the sailing equipment you need, as well as sun cream, as you'll be outside all day. A lot of people have asked whether they can bring their mobile phones or not. We don't advise you to bring them, because people have lost them in the water before, but it's up to you. However, money is not allowed and you won't need it anyway. We'll follow the same timetable every day. Sailing classes start after breakfast at 9.30 and you'll be sailing until midday. Then we'll stop for lunch, which we'll have next to the lake, rather than in the dining hall where other meals are served. We'll all come back to the centre after classes finish for dinner at 7 o'clock. The food's really good. I'm sure you'll like it. Finally, let me give you some important details. The Sailing Centre website address is www aqrly.com. There are lots of pictures and more information about the courses. If you or your parents have any questions you'd like to ask that you can't find answers to on the website, please feel free to call me on this number 047 223 68095, but only between 9 o'clock and 5 o'clock, please. Now listen again. Hello everyone. I've got some information for you about your sailing course. You're staying at the sailing centre for a week, so you need to know what to bring. Everybody should bring a sleeping bag and warm clothes, of course. 
The centre has top quality boats and will provide all the sailing equipment you need, as well as sun cream, as you'll be outside all day. A lot of people have asked whether they can bring their mobile phones or not. We don't advise you to bring them because people have lost them in the water before, but it's up to you. However, money is not allowed and you won't need it anyway. We'll follow the same timetable every day. Sailing classes start after breakfast at 9.30 and you'll be sailing until midday. Then we'll stop for lunch, which we'll have next to the lake, rather than in the dining hall where other meals are served. We'll all come back to the centre after class is finished for dinner at 7 o'clock. The food's really good. I'm sure you'll like it. Finally, let me give you some important details. The Sailing Centre website address is www.aqrly.com. There are lots of pictures and more information about the courses. If you or your parents have any questions you'd like to ask that you can't find answers to on the website, please feel free to call me on this number 047 223 68095. But only between 9 o'clock and 5 o'clock, please. That is the end of part 5. Now turn to part 6, questions 26 to 30. You will hear an interview with a girl called Tara Callum, who is a teenage fashion designer. For each question, circle the correct answer. A, B, or C. You now have one minute to look at the questions for part six. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. You will hear the recording twice. Tara Callum is making a name for herself in the fashion world. Tara, you're only 16. How have you managed to become a successful fashion designer at such a young age? Well, it's just so exciting. I truly did not expect this. I entered a whole bunch of fashion design competitions. I'd been trying for a couple of years and was really giving up hope of winning one. I even wondered if it was worth doing at all. The idea of my stuff being on the cover of a magazine was just a dream. But then I got contacted by the actress Rita Berry, who had been shown some of my designs, and she wanted to wear some of them, so they were seen on TV. It was a real turning point. Were you interested in fashion as a young child? I loved art even when I was tiny. I'd pick up any pencil that was nearby and copy things I saw, you know. Looking at the pictures now, you can't really tell what I was trying to draw. <laughs> but my parents say I was always creative. Anyway, I was about eight, and I found these scarves and sat around with scissors and pins and somehow turned them into a pair of shorts. <laughs> My mom and dad just couldn't believe it. I then begged them to let me take sewing classes, and they agreed, and even got me my own sewing machine. After that, nobody could stop me making things. I was so into it all. 
and a big fashion store are using your designs for their next teenage clothing range. Is that right? Yeah, it's a big thing for me. It seems the store were kind of impressed by my ability to talk about how each piece works with the others and how the collection comes together, which is why they chose me to do the work. I want to be as original as possible, not just go with what's expected for this age group. That isn't how I do things. Color is so important.、Mm. I like to find imaginative ways to use it as much as I possibly can. So, how do you feel about being famous? All this press attention. I have to say, there are some aspects of all that I'm not so keen on. It's stressful having to talk to journalists as much as I'm expected <laughs> to. But I keep reminding myself I need the publicity for my work. They ask a lot of questions, not all of them about fashion. <laughs> But I don't have a boyfriend, which maybe means I don't mind talking about my private life. <laughs> I'm sure it's not that interesting anyway. And having my photo taken doesn't bother me. But I wish I could choose which ones they eventually use. <laughs> so, do you have any advice for young designers out there? I could say loads of things. I don't know. I guess I've learned most from chatting to friends, strangers, anyone, seeing what they say about clothes. It's about following your heart. Don't focus on the who, but the what. And don't let fashion magazines dictate to you. I mean, I look at the magazines, but you don't want to spend too long doing that, or you might end up just copying what you've seen. Another big error, in my opinion. So. Tara, what about the recent? Now listen again. Tara Callum is making a name for herself in the fashion world. Tara, you're only sixteen. How have you managed to become a successful fashion designer at such a young age? Well, it's just so exciting. I truly did not expect this. I entered a whole bunch of fashion design competitions. I'd been trying for a couple of years and was really giving up hope of winning one. I even wondered if it was worth doing at all. The idea of my stuff being on the cover of a magazine was just a dream. But then I got contacted by the actress Rita Berry, who had been shown some of my designs, and she wanted to wear some of them, so they were seen on TV. It was a real turning point. Were you interested in fashion as a young child? I loved art even when I was tiny. I'd pick up any pencil that was nearby and copy things I saw. You know, looking at the pictures now, you can't really tell what I was trying to draw. <laughs> But my parents say I was always creative. Anyway, I was about eight. And I found these scarves and sat around with scissors and pins and somehow turned them into a pair of shorts. <laughs> My mom and dad just couldn't believe it. I then begged them to let me take sewing classes, and they agreed, and even got me my own sewing machine. After that, nobody could stop me making things. I was so into it all. And a big fashion store are using your designs for their next teenage clothing range. Is that right? Yeah, it's a big thing for me. It seems the store were kind of impressed by my ability to talk about how each piece works with the others and how the collection comes together, which is why they chose me to do the work. I want to be as original as possible, not just go with what's expected for this age group. That isn't how I do things. Color is so important.、Mm. I like to find imaginative ways to use it as much as I possibly can. So, how do you feel about being famous? All this press attention. I have to say, there are some aspects of all that I'm not so keen on. It's stressful having to talk to journalists as much as I'm expected <laughs> to. But I keep reminding myself I need the publicity for my work. They ask a lot of questions, not all of them about fashion. <laughs> But I don't have a boyfriend, which maybe means I don't mind talking about my private life. <laughs> I'm sure it's not that interesting anyway.
and having my photo taken doesn't bother me. But I wish I could choose which ones they eventually use. <laughs> so, do you have any advice for young designers out there? I could say loads of things. I don't know. I guess I've learned most from chatting to friends, strangers, <laughs> anyone, seeing what they say about clothes. It's about following your heart. Don't focus on the who, but the what. And don't let fashion magazines dictate to you. I mean, I look at the magazines, but you don't want to spend too long doing that, or you might end up just copying what you've seen. Another big error, in my opinion. So, Tara, what about the recent? That is the end of the test. Please stop writing now. Your supervisor will now collect all the question papers.